What's going on engineers? In this video, we're going to be examining and implementing another common data structure called the single linked list and the double linked list. Like other data structures, many languages already have single and double linked list built into the language or they offer it transparently to the programmer that's using a particular language. Because of this, we've opted again to implement this in C since C does not offer any kind of built-in linked list functionality. So first, what is a linked list? A linked list is similar to an array in that it's a collection of items. So you may be thinking if it's like arrays, why not just use arrays? Why use something fancy like a linked list? The problem with arrays is that arrays are stored in what's called contiguous memory. And what that means is that elements are stored in a line one after another with no extra padding or gap between the elements. The good thing about contiguous memory is you get really fast lookups, meaning if you know the index of the item you're trying to look up, you could just jump right to it because you know the memory is already in a line and you could just go directly to where the data is. The problem with contiguous memory is that if you have, say, 100 integers stored in memory, if you want to insert another integer at, say, position 51, what you actually have to do is you have to take current elements 51 through 100 and shift them over four bytes. Once you shift all those elements over, which is a relatively expensive operation, you can then insert your new 32-bit integer in place. This is one of the major benefits of a linked list is that the data does not need to be stored in a contiguous manner. You can allocate one element over here and you can allocate another element over here and you simply point from the first element to the second element. And then when you add a third element, element number two points number three, number three points number four, number four points number five, and so on, all the way to the end of your linked list. Because of this, inserting an element in the middle of your list does not require moving any memory around. Now that you kind of have an overview of a linked list, let's look at a couple of pros and cons for a single linked list versus a double linked list, as well as what they each are. So really the only difference between a single linked list and a double linked list is that a single linked list only has a pointer to the next item in the list. A double linked list has a pointer to both the next item as well as the previous item. Being able to traverse your list in either direction is one of the primary pros of a double linked list. And it's also one of the cons of a single linked list. Being able to go backwards, say four items in a single linked list is a massively inefficient operation. Whereas with a double linked list, you simply look at the previous pointer to go back to the previous one, and then again and again and again, and it's not a big deal. There are some pros of a single linked list though. It's going to require less memory because with double linked lists, you have to store additional pointers. It's also gonna be easier to implement, and it's gonna have faster insertions and deletions relative to a double linked list because it only has to update a next pointer, whereas a double linked list has to update both a previous and next pointer. And of course, the opposite of the single linked list, for a double linked list, more memory is going to be required. It's going to be more complicated to implement, and you're going to get slower insertions and deletions relative to a single linked list. So let's jump in and start implementing a single linked list. We'll start by creating an element in the list, which is often called a node. In our case, we're just storing an integer as the data, but it could be anything. It could be a struct or a union or a struct of structs. It's whatever you'd like. And then the only thing else in our node is a variable called next, which will be a pointer to the next node in the list. Each list needs to have a starting point, which we often call head, and this will start as a null value, meaning that there's actually nothing in the linked list yet. And when there is something in the list, head will always point to the very first node in the linked list. There's tons of operations that you might find associated with linked lists. That's things like add to beginning, remove from beginning, add to end, remove from end, insert at position, remove at position, remove by value, reverse, sort, and things like that. In this video, we're gonna do add at beginning, add at end, add at position, remove by value. The first function we're gonna work up is the one which will insert an item at a given position. This function, of course, must be supplied with the position to insert at, as well as the data to insert. The first step is to allocate memory for the node and also set the next pointer to null. Now the next pointer may get changed out of null if this item is being inserted into the middle of the list. If head is null, meaning there's nothing in the list, then this is really easy. Simply assign the node to the head. If head is not null, meaning there's already an item assigned to head, then what it becomes necessary to do is to walk through the entire linked list and look until either the position desired is reached or the end of the list is reached. At this point in the code, cur will either be null, meaning we're at the end of the list and we're simply going to add a new node at the end, or cur will not be 
null, meaning we've found the item that we're going to be shifting and inserting this node in between. So now all we do is handle the three possible cases, either the beginning, the end, or the middle. If this node is being inserted at the beginning of the list, we simply update head to reflect the proper node, and then we update the node's next pointer that's being inserted to the old head, which we now call current. If we're at the end of the list, it's really easy. We simply assign the very last node's next pointer to the node that we're inserting. And then if we're in the middle, we have to update two next pointers. We have to update the element before the node being inserted, and then we have to update the node being inserted. Next, we're gonna add two additional functions to handle the adding at the beginning and the adding at the end. And all these do is call add at anyways. So add at beginning is just adding at the zero index, and then adding at the end, we're saying add at the negative one index. And what this does is it makes sure that when this starts looping here, that it will never stop on index does not equal position, of course, because index starts from zero and goes up and position will be negative one. So this will guarantee that it just goes to the very end. The last function I'm gonna make is just a little helper function to actually dump the contents of the list onto the screen just so we can kind of see how it's working. So the last thing we'll do here is actually use these functions above to insert some data and then we're gonna print it out. So what we're doing is we're adding two to the end, three to the end, five to the end, one to the beginning, and then the number four at the third index, which is actually the fourth position. So what we expect us to say is one, two, three, four, five. So let's run our code and see if that's what happens. So we run it here and that's exactly what it does. One, two, three, four, five, as expected. And you'll notice that we inserted them out of order. They are in order, but if you look at the code again, we inserted two, three, and five first, but then we added one to the beginning and then we used to add at to insert the number four at a very specific position. So this goes to show that it is flexible enough to be able to add, add nodes to the beginning, the end, or the middle. So the last function we need to implement now is going to be the remove function. So the way a remove function works is we start by walking through the list and looking for either a node that is null, meaning we're at the end, or a node where the data matches the supplied data that you want to look for to know which one to remove. As I said, if cur is null, we simply do nothing, just return, nothing's been removed. If we've gotten to this point in the code, then we definitely have an item. We now just have to handle the case where it's the first item, it's the last item, and it's some item in the middle, because that will depend on how we switch the pointers. So we know it's the first item if, if prev is null. And it's worth mentioning that this is not prev like the previous item in a double linked list. This is the temporary variable we create called previous just to track the previous item as we walk through the list. So once we know it's a first item, then it's just a matter of determining if there's more items in the list. If the next pointer points to something, then it means there's more items. If it points to nothing, then it means it's the only item. So if it's the only item, we just set head to null. Now there's no list. If there's more items, we just update the head to point to the current items next. And then we simply free the current item. If this is the last item in the list, it's a lot simpler. All we have to do is just update the previous item's next pointer to be null, and then we simply free the current item. The middle item case will be true if the previous item is not null and there's a next item. In that case, we're going to set the previous items next to the current items next, and then we simply free the current item. So the last thing we'll do is go back to our main function. We're going to add a couple remove statements here. What we're going to do is we're going to move the odd items. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the odd items, uh, one, three, and five, and then we'll print out the list after that. So when we run this again, as expected, we see one, two, three, four, five, and then once we remove one, three, and five, all that's left is two and four. So we successfully removed items from the linked list. Now the last thing I do in this video is to skim over what a double linked list would look like. And we're not gonna go into depth because they're pretty similar. I will, however, include each as a separate file on my GitHub, which is located in the description below. Clicking over to the double linked list, we see one immediate difference is that we have a second pointer called previous. And then as we skim down to the add function, we see as we're adding new nodes, we have to update both the next and previous of each node. So we're updating double the amount of pointers. However, all the cases are handled in the exact same way. We handle the beginning and the middle case. The add beginning and add end functions are exactly the same. And then the remove is different only in the same way as the add is different, which is to say that when we handle the first item, last item, and middle item, we have to update both the next and the previous but more or less the code is exactly the same. I did add a separate function called dump underscore rev, which will print out the items in the list in a reverse order, because remember, at double linked list, we have the ability to read backwards. So what this code does is it seeks to the end of the list, 
and then it starts walking backwards through the list and printing out every item. And that's it for the video. That's it for single and double linked lists. Hopefully I was able to clear up a lot of confusion regarding this data structure. As always, if you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please leave them below in the comments. Other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.